There are many reasons why critically ill patients need to be transferred. Let's assume that the legal and ethical issues behind the transfer have been considered. Once the decision for transfer has been made, there are four important organisational principles that one should think about. How are we actually going to do the transfer itself? Communicate early with the receiving hospital. Whether it's 100 yards or 100 miles, the same principles should be applied. And lastly, collaboration between hospitals can improve patient safety and reduce risks. Let's take the first of these. What manner should we transfer the patients? This decision is hardest to make when the patient's very unstable. But really, the decisions are between scoop and run versus stay and play. Scoop and run is where we move the patient as fast as possible, irrespective of their physiological condition. Stay and play is where we stay and stabilise the patient as much as possible before we move them. Now these decisions depend on some important key questions. The key questions to ask yourself when you're making this decision include, is the patient safest where they are now? Or would they be safer getting in the back of an ambulance and moving quickly to the receiving hospital? At least when they get there, they can receive the definitive care. You also need to consider what are the resources available to you, and these will depend on the time of day, the number of personnel available, and the specific resources within the hospital. These decisions can only be made locally, and in an ideal world they should be made in advance. But national guidance is available for specific types of transfer. The second important principle is to make sure you communicate early and effectively with the receiving team. This is an area which frequently goes wrong. The challenge here is to try and remember the information to get across, and the best way to do that is to use some kind of framework. But remember, it is vital that the receiving hospital's consultant has been referred all the information and has accepted the patient before the transfer. The third point is pretty self-explanatory. Whether it is 100 yards or 100 miles, the same principle should be applied. Many people have fallen foul of the fact that they've been unprepared when they've transferred a patient a short distance. So, apply the same principles as if you were going a long way with the patient. Lastly, we have shown that through network collaborations of hospitals, we can reduce risks and improve safety during these transfers. At three o'clock in the morning when these transfers always happen, it will be you who has to make these decisions. Do you scoop and run? Do you stay and play? It will be you who needs to communicate early with the receiving hospital. But in the longer term, it's you and your department who can put together the collaboration of hospitals that is needed to improve the safety of transfers.